I'm born in Liechtenstein, a country with 38,000 inhabitants. I think we have to rematch and to tell stories to influence change. Liechtenstein is a good starting point to do so, because here you can think big and nothing is impossible. That's why we have started to sell stories that we could imagine, because everything you can imagine is real. And we felt that it was the moment to do something. That was the reason why we started the nonprofit foundation, the System Change Foundation, with the World Systemic Forum and the Hoos. The Hoos is, is a house, where, a happening hub, where we try to think different. We all know technology has to be part of the solution, but it is more than technology. We need as well behavior change and policy change. Systemic change needs creative ideas and the willingness to reimagine. With our approach, with our world systemic form and the who's, we help to reimagine. We bring together opinion leaders, decision makers, creative minds, capital, what you need to reimagine. Imagination is the starting point of everything. Rudolf Rudy Hilti is my guest on this episode of Inside Ideas brought to you by 1.5 Media and Innovators Magazine. Rudy is an entrepreneur and visionary from Liechtenstein. Rudy considers himself a global citizen, a responsible optimist and change maker who invests his emotional and financial resources exclusively in projects which are aligned with his values, focusing on integrity and sustainability. Rudy is among others, the co-founder of the Systems Change Foundation and the Think and Do Tank, the Hoos Institute, a platform to explore the transformation of the old economy into an ecologically as well as econo economically sustainable digital modern era. The foundation sees itself as a value-based global village for the global topics to rethink systems and global challenges historically independent of higher national interests. Welcome, Rudy. It's so good to see you again. Hi, Mark. It's a pleasure to see you. I'm glad you're on the show and thank you for, for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, for our listeners, uh, Rudy and I have known each other for a while. We met originally in Italy um, at, a, at H Farm at an event that was there. And, and we got to discussing about the sustainable development goals and about infrastructure specifically for Liechtenstein and some of the projects that he was working on. And, and then later, um, I actually traveled to Liechtenstein and, and was part of uh, an event that I'm wearing the button for right here on, on my lapel. It's a transformer button or, or lapel pin. And we had a transformational event where, where I spoke, but I participated with a group of wonderful thought leaders who are thinking about the future and, and where we're going about sustainable development. We had a wonderful workshop and our paths have crossed many times since then. And and so I'm, I'm very excited to finally, in your busy schedule, have some time to have a deep dive talk and discussion. Your introduction that I gave uh, is you know, your biography it, it was rather short because I know you've been around for a while. You've done a lot of things. You travel the, the world. Um, did I leave anything out, anything you want to touch on that's maybe important for your listeners to know a little insight into Rudy? No, I think you mentioned a lot. I think what I am, it's a, a rethinker and I'm born in a really special circumstance in a, in a country with, with it. It's more or less a village with 38,000 inhabitants and that's making me a bit special in thinking because I think in, in complex systems, ecosystems, I am born with it. So that's super simple. Yeah, that's a part, probably part of your creative side where you're, you're not only an artist and creative in many, many different ways and uh, uh, surround yourself with uh, all sorts of wonderful people. Um, let's dive right into the, the first question, which was also uh, mentioned in your biography, you consider yourself a global citizen 
And that is always one of my standard first questions. The reason I ask it is one, I wanna know with you traveling the world, do you truly feel like a global citizen? And if the future held for you, one without borders, nations, divisions, limitations, how would you feel about that? Or is it already the case for you? Um, yeah, but I think you're not a global citizen because of traveling a lot or seeing a lot of things. It's more about the philosophy you share. So I really do not see any difference between different nations. Uh, because if you're open mind, if you have a lot of friends from different with different backgrounds, you can meet them as well in Switzerland. So I met many different nationalities here at home as well. I think it's more about what connects us as humans and it's not the nation, it's not the passport, not at all. I think it's just a small world with <laughs> we are uh, all the same and we have all the same problems with climate change. and. Um, now we have to accept that we cannot solve these problems by closing the borders and or by saying we are different than the others. I think it's we're all together in this. I totally agree, and and that's why I ask. You're absolutely right. It has nothing to do with the with traveling or nations and borders. It has more to do with being part of a symbiotic Earth, connected to all the other um, Homo sapiens and species on our planet. It, I, it's because as well we are one click away of every everyone and everything so we are so close yeah and it used to be there. it used to be six degrees of separation i think it's uh, gotten even smaller in, in, in times and and in this digital um technological age that we're in um hopefully getting out of the industrial revolution that we're really in an age where we're more connected than ever. And if we realize that we're part of this symbiotic earth, that it uh, really makes us more compassionate and also realize that we are in some respects, this global citizen or this, this part of the symbiotic earth. Um, that, that brings me to another thing. Well, why why um, did you start? your foundations why did you get on that path was there an aha moment or something that was getting at you said i need to create this what was the thought or the journey behind that i think one thing was that what i mentioned that i grew up in a country with it's more or less a village but it's a whole country and it works is all his like a like a big country but there's nothing impossible because it's so easy to know everyone and I grew up with the attitude that I understand more or less the complex situation or between the different uh, uh, sectors. But this, that was just the beginning, I, or I think something I grew up with. And then once there was, a, it's like a mentor of mine, he told me, there's someone you have to meet. And it was a futurist, Christopher Peterka. Then uh, I met him and then he was talking about the future, where the future is going to and how it looked like. And, but more as a, as a futurist, just in thinking. And then I mentioned the idea, why, why not doing it? Um, not only thinking about it, that was then the, the birthplace of the action tank, the Who's Institute. I said we create a think and action tank because in the end it's all about what you can imagine. And for me, it was always so in a way I thought I can imagine a whole uh, ecosystem and, and everything starts small, right? Everything starts in a lab. A smartphone, I think it was started in a lab, not on a global market. So somewhere, somewhere it has to, uh, to start. And that was the, the, the burst. Yeah, it was. I mean, well, I recently shared a, a movie with a, a bunch of my friends, General Magic, which is a documentary about the beginnings of the, the smartphone and, and a lot of other transitions, you know, that not only Apple and others had and uh, had uh, Barack Berkowitz, as I, I think you know him as well from MIT Media Labs, the uh, director of operations and strategy with them and so we spoke about that as well that there's this journey of the future this journey of innovations 
and things. You you brought up your your history or fortunate to to be born into um, a certain not only Liechtenstein, but I think there was a lot of ties to the Industrial Revolution or into different ways of doing things, things that the world needed to see. And I, I believe in our past discussions or in our past crossings, there's, there's this more and more emerging that we need another shift, another transition. Can you go into that a little bit more, what the thought process is and how that journey has been? Because it wasn't just the who's, it was a couple other things along the way besides Christopher, it was a couple other things that happen along the way and it's kind of starting to evolve and emerge. Sure, because I think sometimes you feel the moments when you have to do, right? You feel it. Uh, and I think that was the point as well when we, when we came to God, as well when I got to know you, yeah. uh, Mark, I think that was this moment, you feel it that you have to do it. And I think that was the same here in Liechtenstein that you understand how Liechtenstein worked. I, I think it was after the uh, Second World War people re really realized there's, there's something going on. So now it's a time to change. And it was as well in my family. So in my family, we had many successful people, especially from the industrial age. So my grandfather was part of a, of, of a huge uh, food company or he was the founder and his brother started a huge um, tools company and all this. And this happened in one family. And I think it's because if someone starts Audible, you, you think bigger, right? And it, it's what I mentioned as well. Everything you can imagine, it's, um, it starts what you believe you can do that you will do. Um, and the, that's a, as well the moment for us that we say, hey, let's start a place where no national agenda because it's too small. And it's what we do, it's not for Liechtenstein, it's just for having one place where we can think bigger and different but it's not for the country itself, it's even a bigger idea. Um, and, and then we have seen the power of storytelling because if you, yeah, if you believe in it, you do it. And it starts with a story. Can you tell and, me about the, 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 the beginning of the Hoos Institute a little bit, what the platform is about and about the transformation. And then uh, let's, let's go into the World Systems Change Foundation as well. So kind of both. And it, I don't know if, if you feel that they're too tied together or if one's a learning off of the other, but there's kind of in the journey, there's a process there that I'd like to hear or maybe understand fully. I think it's all connected. It's one movement, and uh -huh. we have our who's plan or master plan, and it started with to find a story that could be imagined, something completely. And I think that's why Liechtenstein came into the play, because here we really can think big, not seeing it like a lab, but just finding one place where you really can rethink policies or where you can rethink. Um, structures from governments working together with, with private sectors, what else? It's just a place where you can think big, right? And the second step was to build a global network of, of opinion leaders, of decision makers, of creative minds, of scientists, all you need for systemic change, right? That was the second step, what we, we said we, we wish to do with the who's. And, and the third one was then to stimulate discussion around the topic of system change. In the beginning, we thought, okay, we have to be the, the platform to, to push a country or to help a country to, to find the right examples to, to do. But now we realized sometimes it's better just to stimulate the discussions around that, that others will join the journey. And it's always, you always have to ask yourself how to influence change, right? Yeah. And we do this through storytelling and through a strong network, because if you have a strong network, you can think bigger. And then the fourth step was to find the right rules and guidelines together. And the, and the fifth step was to build a, a culture around this, a new common understanding yeah. with an yeah. independent organized offshots of the hood, hopefully. So it's five steps, it starts with imagination, Second was a network. Third was 
this, uh, these discussions and examples, the fourth one was guidelines and the fifth is, is a sustainable culture we would like to create. And for this, we have, I think, on the top, we have the System Change Foundation, a nonprofit foundation in Vaduz. We have the Who's as a physical house, as a happening hub. And then for sure, we, we have as well this World Systemic Forum. You have been part since day one. Yeah, well. thank These you. Talks. And um, all together, should, uh, should, uh, we would like to create a momentum for change. There definitely has been a momentum and it was a, not only a, a safe space for discussion and for uh, coming together to collaborate, to, to meet the right people, the thought leaders. And it was, uh, as you know, and you you're, uh, are there as well, um, it's a much different type of conversation than that happens at Davos at uh, the World Economic Forum. It's one that, um, uh, a, a lot of even more important discussions and thoughts and collaborations and unification towards a, 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 a new direction of, uh, of thought leadership. So creating the, the, not only the story, but the, the opportunity to discuss things that maybe aren't happening, that aren't occurring in our world. So very thankful to be included, but I also really enjoy um, those those times and things that are happening. What can we expect to see coming up in, in the future from uh, the World Systemic Forum and uh, the World System Change Foundation? What, what are some things, some irons in the fire that you're working on, directions that is going? I, th I think for, for us, it's really the creative approach is an important thing because what we believe that you have to, you have to forgot many things which was built for the industrial age. We are in a completely new time, which is, works completely different. Um, as well, the, the digital transformation or this digital disruption, I think that's a great thing because everything will change radically. And it's good because everything has to change radically. And we would like to be there to say, how can we be a bridge builder for change, but not trying to to adapt just the old and do it a bit different or start a bit greenwashing or all this. We really start from the scratch, from the bottom, but really keep it with, with um, make it in a way tangible. Now back to the point why we started in Liechtenstein, I think make it imaginable that, uh, and then if, if you do this, you can really have a starting point for change. And uh, yeah, it starts with us. And we all together, we built the, the, the movement, the momentum for change. Is that, that, that movement or, or momentum, is it going well? How, how are you happy with, with how that's evolving? Is it an organic growth? Uh, definitely, I think what, what we learned, we can, expand our network in a, in a really global, powerful community. This works wonderful because it's the right time, right? Everyone, everyone feels it. Now it's the time to do. But then we see as well the problem because usually a, a pioneers, they're too early and companies are too late. And then when it's the right time to act, and so it needs so many times, it needs a long way to go. But I think we, we accepted this way. That's as well why we started the foundation as a nonprofit foundation to, to support these pioneers, but to bring them together with people who re really can scale. And it, it, it needs, it has to go hand in hand. The same with sustainability, it has to be profitable in the long term. Yeah, I mean, yep. to be sustainable means to sustain your business, your resources, your employees, yourself over multiple generations within the future to, to uh, be self-sustaining to, 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 for future generations. And it's also, a, it's a better business model. It's more efficient. It's, it's something that gives you a certain amount of resilience in the future, although there is another layer of that resilience. I totally am in line with you on that. For this, sometimes we have to change as well the circumstances around that because now we do not pay the price 
the value of the price is not the same we pay. And I think that is well a problem in this world. And that's why we have to rethink so many things, right? And then we have to see it as well as an opportunity to start with, for, for sure. Now, many things are still in a really early phase, but we will go there and it's the only way we can go. I think without sustainable ecosystem, there is no future. And <laughs> that's why I think it's the only way to go. Yeah. I but think... at the same time, you have to, you have to speak a language of the people you want to convince. And we, we would like to convince as well capital markets. We would as well like to convince policymakers. We would like to convince decision makers and opinion leaders. So it needs as well, that's why we say we are optimists, progressive and responsible optimists, um, which just a completely new philosophy. But as well, we see there's it's a new way of doing things. Uh, up, up until um, the pandemic, you you guys had some really good partners and collaborations with you know everything UN organizations to big other foundations, and seems like you are well on on a good way to to set some plans and and, and agendas for the for the future and the development of where things are going. My question is kind of with all this experience, this journey, these travels that you've had up until this point, how did you weather the pandemic? Did any of that help you be in the mindset or already uh, have the preparedness tools or the resilience to make it through this? Can you tell us a little insight of how you've weathered it, what it's looked like for you? Uh, sure, uh, pandemic, I think, <laughs> that's so the humans they have to see something or they have to see really crazy times that they will change and i think now with the pandemic we have seen that we can change we can take radical change as well it wasn't the same with now with all the flights we had i think it was for so many pe people not imaginable ima before yeah with, but now we see we can do with less or we can we can do it different um and it, and it starts in our head right and the pandemic made it more um imaginable did it did it feel like a a, a collapse or a scary time or was it because of that specifically for you and what you're doing, your foundations, your your businesses, your day-to-day -day life, did you feel like, oh, hell, everything, you know, we're, this is a horrible time? Or did you feel you were prepared? Did From the way you were thinking, the thoughts and, and the ideas that you were talking about the future and working on these things, did that help in any way? Would it have put you in a better spot than you probably, if you hadn't gone those paths? Yeah, for sure. I think that COVID was horrible for so many people and it's a horrible thing for a world. Definitely. But at the yeah. same time, we see te technology is part of the solution, right? So, and technology is neutral. It's just what we do is this tech. And now we have to accept that we, we should use this new technology. We should use this new solution. We should use it with a, with a different understanding, with a different um, uh, culture, maybe, yeah. It's a, a culture we, we have to change because as well as system changes, it's not about, we always say it's about three things. It's about technology change, but I think that that's more or less the easiest part of it. I think the more uh, difficult things are uh, behavior change and policy change. I agree. And this is well that we say, look, we are not a platform for technology per se, I think others can do this better, but we would like to influence this, especially policy change, because for us, it's easy to reach out to policymakers without having a bigger agenda than, or a different agenda than, than the topic itself. And our world still works in nations, so there's always more. And that's why we say not to think without the box instead of, instead of outside the box. There is no box, especially for this topic digital and, and uh, climate change. 
the reason I ask those questions and they're leading in some respects is because when you talk to businesses or organizations, even policymakers, about sustainable transitions that we need to make and about uh, a building resilient, desirable futures, about um, creating different business models to operate in the future, the question that always is very present, it, is it profitable? Will I get a return on my investment? How much will it cost? How long will it take? Things like that. You, you started with these foundations and with what you've been working on for years now to, to make that transition, to make that movement in the right direction. And so um, this pause, this phase that we've had, uh, where, where there's been many things that have bubbled to the surface besides COVID, Black Lives Matters, and, and many other uh, things have bubbled to the surface that uh, have affected us. But now we have you personally, I'm asking, do you have some positive responses that say, wow, that is a better model because I've weathered it very well and, and, and um, I, I'm going to be more prepared in the future. Those who suffered, those who had those, those uh, situations during this time, uh, I'm sorry they weren't prepared, but it's always shoulda, coulda, woulda, and those people who've heard the message tons of times, but for, for one reason or another, were just not able to do it, whether it was policy, money, profits, whatever, they, they didn't do it. Um, but now there's, there's really like, you know, the point where they can see that the investments, return on investment on ESG uh, um, investments or on Earth Overshoot Day, that it's actually been a really positive thing for those people who already have began to make that transition to a different future. Okay. That's a way why we, we like to, or we try to convince these people, and not only to convince people they're already on the journey, that's why we invest so diff completely different uh, people and institutions. And we bring it all together because you, 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 you need as well these institutional, these people with capital to, to, to invest in the future with a long-term approach. Uh, they have to learn a new, um, or they have to see the potential of it or at least they have to be behind it. It's, that's why we say we have to change our lifestyle or our understanding. That's just a, a new approach. We, we need people from scientific or from technology driven people. We need people from policy makers making it, um, making it possible, the new, the new technology. And we bring this all together and and try to convince them for, for of the new of the new sustainable way because it, for me it's the biggest growth market and we should accept this and it's, it's the same if what switzerland did in the past and i think it's amazing it's just a story of, of swiss made, swissness and it's and it's quality everyone accepted switzerland has the best quality if you sell chocolate watches pharma, banking, it doesn't matter what, we, we, ch we charge a premium for being better in quality than, than others. But I think it's more a myth or it's a story, but it's a great story. And we have to do now the same for sustainability. I think, I hope that we, in, in the future, that we say from Switzerland, this is Swissness, it's not better quality, it's more sustainable. And people are ready to pay this, this premium and then we can start a, a, a run because the, it's a goal to, to make others to do better than others, but in a more sustainable way instead of just doing it in a bigger or. I agree. I think that when you, when you um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you speak about uh, the premium, pay the premium or, or for the quality, really what you're talking about is about paying the true cost of an item. You're talking about paying the total environmental cost to, to pay a product. Now, so, you know, I do a lot with food. Your grandfather did a lot with food as well. Um, when you cheapen food, you cheapen life. And you can apply that to products too. If you cheapen a product, 
produce it as cheap as possible, somebody pays that price, not only the environment, but also your employees, insurance benefits, it can, the list can go on and on um, of, of someone's something that pays the price of, of cheapening that. Uh, the true cost, the true value, the fair trade, the fair wage, and the total environmental cost as percentage of EBITDA, that's a different form of paying the true price, paying the value for that quality so that it can be something that's circular and self-sustaining, something that is truly that. I, I think that's what you're saying. Um, and, and that's what I hear out in, in our past uh, dealings. I, I know that's a, a lot of how you think and how you work in these complexities, which leads me nicely to, to, to the question, do you believe that there is a roadmap, a plan of action, targets, indicators, um, monies that we need to do that will get us to a different future by 2030, by December 2030? Yeah, definitely. Look, what, what I mentioned as well, and I think my business partner as well wrote a lot of things about in, in, in his book about it. Uh, value and price is not the same. And, and that's the problem in our world right now because we do not have the information yet. And that's why there's such a big gap. And sustainability, I discuss this a lot with my fiance. What does it mean? Because now we see everything is in a way sustained or everyone says he's sustainable in a way. But I think to be sustainable, you have to be transparent. And uh, with, uh, tr to being transparent, means you can you can see what what, what is what, what's the real price because now we we don't pay the real price it, yeah. it's like a fake that we pay because we just <laughs> do so that we don't know or we wish to not know but in future it will not be hopefully it will not be possible anymore because we have the data and we have the information and we can we can create a fair price for things. And this is in food, it's a, you're the expert there. <laughs> you're the, yeah. I think that we, what, what I'm really waiting for. But what is your master plan to, to, to change this? Well, thanks, thanks for asking. You, as you know, I'm an advocate for the Sustainable Development Goals. And not only is it the world's first ever historical pre precedence, but a plan for humanity to get us to December 2030 and to give us a, a pretty solid springboard or foundation. Most people honestly don't even know what the sustainable development goals are. They don't know that they're a system and they don't know the story behind them, that they're really um, not only the world's first ever global moonshot, but it's a historical precedence unheard of, uh, set for a plan, an action plan, a unified plan for humanity, which when I speak to other people, they don't have a clue what our plan is. They don't know what they're going. And as a business person, as a creative, you know, if you don't have uh, architectural plans, if you don't have building plans, if you don't have a plan, you don't have any direction and you're never going to reach anything. You're just blown around through the wind. This is a true plan, a sustainable development plan uh, to, to create a nice future. So for me, uh, it's obviously the 17 sustainable development goals. One other thing that a lot of people don't know that I always really want to um, make them aware of, and that's why I like the World Systemic Forum. That's why I like the, the Systems Change Foundation and the things that you do, because not only is it embracing complexity and systems thinking, but what it does is it takes a deep dive look at what are the SDGs and, and how, how do we use them and apply them. If you look at them, it's not bit, a, a tweak on business as usual. It's not just a slight adjustment in business as usual moving forward. It's truly a global new plan, a new economic plan, a, a, a new sustainability plan, a new infrastructure plan, a new innovation plan that changes everything drastically from what we've ever seen before in our world. And, and some people, don't understand that that is the new model. That is the new global unified operating system 
to get us to, to a better future. And people just really don't realize that because they haven't heard, one heard of them or they haven't dived deep enough into really what they mean and how to understand them. The people at Davos at the UN and, and a lot of the uh, people uh, at your foundations and groups, they kind of get that because they embrace the systems thinking and the complexity. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean that we give up our nations, our borders, our politics and things like that. What it means is that we unify ourselves on a, on a, on a step above our nationalistic models on a global model that says we're setting the bar here and we don't ever want to go, go below this level of standard for our, for humanity and the way we operate on our planet because it's just a better system that will sustain humanity, our world, for, for much future generations. And, and, and the core of it is, is to bring us into the safe operating spaces of our planetary boundaries. And so when people grasp that, the light just goes on. They're like, oh my God, there is a plan. Because if there was not a plan, Rudy, I'm, I'm telling you honestly, People are out there looking daily. They're looking to their nations, their cities, their communities for some kind of a plan. What's next? What's going to happen? And nobody knows. And uh, they're unsure. We don't have the right leadership. And so um, I think, um, and this will be enough. I know I, I don't want to go off you asking me the questions. It's, it's you're here. But it's really important to, to realize that if we don't accept it and we know we had a, a historical plan in place, it's almost verging on um, criminal behavior. People like the Trumpocalypse who, who try to step out of the Paris Agreement or, or not say they don't wanna be part of it, or actually it's, it, it's a criminal thing for all humanity and there should be some, some consequences because all the other time in our worlds, we're always looking for some kind of a plan or help or better infrastructure for our future. It's here. It's been around for a long time. And for us to wait five, six years to just to start acting on it, that's time we don't have to waste. So I could go, you know, I could go on for hours <laughs> about it. But I mean, I, I think we're aligned in many, in many ways about that. But that brings me to, to my burning question for you. Um, and that is the burning question, WTF, and it's not the swear word, you've heard it before, what's the future? I think to begin with, I think, and it, it will be, I think we should forget what we know to know what we should know. And I think that's really important to really start from the scratch. And this is a really difficult thing right now because we have so many experienced people and sometimes I think it's a risk to have too many experienced people at the table. So just to understand the future, I think it's first to forget what we have right now, because what we need, what, what I mentioned, we need radical systemic change, but they do not need that there's no business model, there's no opportunities, there's no, no, it's just different, but it's how the world works. It's the same with, with Liechtenstein. I think Liechtenstein was a really poor country, but not that we have been farmers, like in Switzerland as well. Like, you know how it was just a different world. Yeah. And then we have seen the opportunity. Um, and this just to come to the point how the future uh, will look like. And what I would like to say, just we have to reimagine the industrial age because the future has completely different setup and it will be tech driven tech is good tech is neutral it's just we, how we use this technology how we create a framework that it's fair that we understand what's behind and this has to be radically we, we have to rethink it in the whole complex system not only in one as, as well <laughs> what, what's the model behind what, what, who pays with what who influence whom and all this that we have to rethink. But I believe that with this digital transformation, which will change everything radically, we can create a sustainable ecosystem, which is fully transparent. I'm, I mean, with fully transparent that we, that we see the real costs, 
that we pay the real costs. And with this, we will create uh, an, an ecosystem which is working together, which is the whole complexity, complexity um, will be seen. And you have to find a way to bring it back in a, in a, in a sustainable ecosystem. That's in, in a overall, not going too deep in how exactly it could look like. I just mean, so the digital transformation will be a great thing. And we always call this the digital modern era. We think that's the beginning of a new era and we have to see it as something positive and making things transparent. And with this transparent about the cost, the real costs, and um, and then we, what we have as well is I think a completely different uh, lifestyle because now it's so it's, humans are doing so many stupid things just so to show off. Yeah. But how can you show off with something which is destroying the earth? Why? Why can you be someone by destroying Mother Earth? Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can't be someone until you hurt something or something else or, or take away from something else. And that's a really messed up um, system that has a limit to growth. Eventually that, that has to end and change. One, for, for some of our podcast listeners, as you were, you were kind of doing some hand movements and I could hear you on, on, on the desk. You're basically describing uh, a closed system within planetary boundaries, a circular system, something that is a system and very complex and, and you could probably talk hours about it. And then you, you began your answer with something that speaks to me and I don't know if I heard it right. And that's why I want to kind of mirror it back to you, repeat it back to you to see if, if I was on the same page. What I heard is, it's great to have specialists. Sometimes we have too many specialists, but we need people to forget how we have been doing it, break their habits, and we need the people who, who don't know that it is not impossible to reach a better future. Those people who, um, and, and the biggest example is, as you've heard this before, Bertrand Picard, a pioneer and doctor who flew around the world in a solar impulse, a solar airplane, when he was building that plane, he went to the experts and the specialist engineers to, to help him build the wing and, and the solar impulse. And how do I get these, make it lighter than possible, but get the solar panels and the wings and all the experts, they said it's impossible, it can't be done, we don't know how to do it. So he went to a shipbuilder who didn't know it was, imp was impossible and he got it done. And, and that's what I hear out on your answer, is that kind of correct or, or am I still not getting it 100%? Yeah, sure, I think this as well, it's, it's, it's so important that you take yourself not too serious. Yeah. And that's what I mean, why I am a creative mind. Yeah. It's, I'm just open and I'm optimistic about, and <laughs> sometimes it's not working out, but it's fine. Then try it again, try it again. And it's okay to fail. Yeah, yeah, it's okay to, and we have to accept this. Why? But I think that's a problem of the society sometimes because we are afraid of failing or falling. But why? If you have a good, just try it out. I think you have to learn this. But that's the other point why it's difficult. So many people can't. And that's why we think as well, you have to bring the right people together. Sometimes you need to, right people with capital supporting others to let them f fail but maybe they succeed as well but you have to bring it's as well an ecosystem it's not going alone it's not the individual individuals it's the crowd but the crowd is the individuals together right yeah. and we have all them together with with a common goal of systemic change but in a in a, in a, in a to create a better future then we can then we can fail and it's fine to do that but some of these people will then succeed as well and um that's i always say i'm a, a open creative mind and super optimistic that's great and i know you to be such so i've, I've been fortunate enough to be on a few of um 
quite a few of your events and also from the beginning on on some things um this year started out really i i, I you know, sometimes you feel guilty about it, but damn it, I don't feel guilty one bit. This year started out with a bang and some amazing things happened. We were on a, a fabulous roadmap with some great amb ambitions and we still are. I've seen some more ambitions and some things, really positive things come uh, to give hope and optimism for the future. We, we were in Liechtenstein, we went into the, the cave and you're gonna have to give me the, this big tunnel cave that's, uh, you're gonna have to explain that to me. And that's where the World Systemic Forum uh, annual meeting was right before Davos that we met in there. And they do a lot of amazing things and experiments and innovations and testings within that closed type of environment which then are then brought out and distributed to the world you can you tell us a little bit about that but also um may, may i don't know i think you're doing getting ready to do some partnerships or have with them on, on some other things just that that experience as well and, and then we can talk about maybe our if you want our, our journey to to davos afterwards mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I think what we did there, I think uh, what we would like to bring our people together and help them to, to think different, bigger. And it's all about the willingness to reimagine, right? And to, to do a special event, a world systemic forum within a mountain in a very special circumstance, driving in with electric cars, making a show helps to create this myth of systemic change. At the same time, we would say, what, what's, what's the real impact? One is the imagination, right? And the other is to set these examples. And I think uh, um, this, this mountain, this empty mountain is huge. It's a perfect place to test things out that we can showcase that it works, right? That's one thing. And in the end, it's like, what's the, the who's the is a house, it's just a roof but it can be under construction. It can be in Berlin, like with the Opera Hoos, the yeah. collaboration we have, or in, in Cape Town where we have a school house, school Hoos. It doesn't matter where it is, it's just a roof. It can be under construction, it can be super old and super fancy like an opera house, or it can just be a mountain. It doesn't matter, it's just, we bring people together. And I think that what we did as well at the, at the, at the World Systemic Forum in, 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 the, in the mountain. And afterwards with our sustainable flight to Davos, yeah, it was showcasing that that's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Sustainable way, it's the only cool way to go. CO2 neutral, Climeworks helicopter flight to Davos. And it was the same place where everybody else is landing in an unsustainable way without doing offsetting uh, where you'd see prominent people or you know whoever else having impact. But there is a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, think about it differently. Forget what you've known, forget that it's impossible, and let's figure out the ways that we think might be impossible let's figure out those ways to get it done and make it happen and yeah. and there's always a transition and a learning curve within that process but yeah that was a fabulous uh experience but it also set an example to others it is possible think about it differently and and make it cool yeah make, make it, it real cool yeah make it the new big thing swiss swissness right swiss yeah. me not swissness. quality sustainable Cool, and, cool, coolness and sexy. I mean, that's what Tesla did with the Roadster. So, you know, fast and big and you got to make it cool and sexy and then just build upon that. Mm -hmm. And then, then go to journey. To, maybe it starts as well as climate is offsetting, but in the long term, maybe we go and make, make biofuels fuels or something else, but just go to a, have a big dream. I think we need an, a new understanding, a new goal where, where we are going to. And then we have to believe in the outcomes. And if we believe in it, we will do it. And then at the same time, we need the investors there 
who are helping these people to, to think big, to act big, to do it, to have the time to do it, because that's a problem as well. We, we have so many people that are just short-term thinkers because they're not believing in the big thing and so they're not getting the big amount or the capital they need to, to, to do it. And that would, we have to change a lot. Yeah, and I, I, I don't, I don't want to look at those people in any way in a negative way because there's, I mean, I used to be one of them over 20 years, more than 20 years ago. I definitely would, if you would have told me I'm going to be doing and speaking to the people and, uh, that I am now, Absolutely, I wouldn't have believed it in a million years. I was, you know, because I was in a different place. I was in a different mindset. I didn't have that understanding. I didn't have the right people. And there is a way to turn that light on, to make that transition, to have those discussions. And there are some amazing people, uh, some absolutely amazing people who at one time uh, were different. And then the light went on and they were able to make that transition. As you know, I, I um, consult for a lot of air, airlines, uh, 21 different airline companies and, and groups uh, and uh, airplane providers. Uh, th and this ties into to the experience we had uh, flying in, into Davos. There's over 126, well over 126 different companies working on vertical takeoff, work, working on a hydrogen jet fuel, working on electrical uh, aircraft, commercial grade electrical that are working on five passenger taxis, Ilium and uh, uh, Uber is doing something and Hyundai is doing something and Boeing and Airbus and, and uh, KLM and many others are working on, on these things already. Um, the future of flight, of impact on our environment is not going to be what it's going to be today. And uh, it's not about stopping our flying. It's not about stopping uh, our, our, our communication with people around the world. It's about embracing that there is a different way to do things. And it's already coming by 2024, 2026, the latest. You will be astounded by the amount of of options to fly without harming our planet, it, maybe it's shorter distances at first, uh, it's gonna blow your mind, just like it maybe a few years ago, it was blowing our minds that there's autonomous vehicles driving you know, uh, down the road and there's nobody looking at the steering wheel or the driver's asleep, whatever you know, uh, we, we've gotten to. The future comes fast for us all. Sure. And that leads nicely into this question that I have for you. It's probably my last hardest question for you. And, it, and uh, it's similar to some of the answers you've already given me, but what does a world that works for everyone look like for you? I think that we have to go back to the basics, what humans need. And I think that that's a problem right now because we dream of something which is not making us happy you see but it's a big dream right and people think when they are get there they would be happy but that's that's not the point it's just a it's a there are fake news right yeah <laughs> fake dreams and i think uh what we need is go back to our human needs for sure it's security it's a family or not no family, it's our uh, friends and family, this emotional uh, uh, get togethers. It's to, to per personally to grow. I think it is well, it's still the same. I think you would like to have would do something out your your life but it's not ju just a grow growth is not only to start a company and grow with the revenue and profits it can be different right it can be as well a, you can grow in your personality this you should create and it's all these basic needs we need with um with a clear understanding what we do. That's why I say it's key that we are have a transparent world. 
and I think in the digital modern era, we can add it, but in a way that it's not, you know, the power is decentral in a way that we are still free, freedom. It's another important thing. And all this, I think it's our basic needs. We have just to accept that this is, these are the things we are looking for. And then for sure, food is an, is an important thing because everything what we do in the past, we did it to get enough food, right? And I think that we have to accept again that we, yeah, that we have um, a good and healthy food ecosystem taking place this is one of as well pr priority yeah i i agree with you that that uh is one for me as well because for me it's the absolute basics of life it's our energy source and and everything has started with our need for that basic energy source and and built upon it there thereof you know not only food production food farming and uh, machinery and industry and, and that that's all it's all closely tied um, to us and and where our journey and our evolution has been on this planet so if you were to give my listeners a sustainable takeaway or a a tip or suggestion to make their their life and their business and the innovations that they do better if you were to have a new transformer at the Hoos Institute and you were to advise them with some tips and suggestions of concrete actions or things that they could do to become a better, more impactful innovator or a better steward on our planet, what would that be? So reimagine, believe in yourself. And if you reimagine, you can start to think big, believe in the outcomes and then start to do today that you create this tomorrow, what you're aiming for. And everything starts in your head. Just believe yes. in yourself. Yeah. It's and, not, and what I mentioned yeah. as well, don't take yourself too serious. Don't take yourself too serious. Yeah. Be a creative mind, especially these days, right? The power of ideas and imagination don't be too serious and, and also the power to, to rethink, you know, uh, I love that. That's a, that's a, a, a great, a great takeaway that they can apply. And it probably would be um, the same answer. If, um, if you had a captive audience, if you could go up to every individual in the world and you only had the opportunity to give them an elevator pitch or just a short little, message that could change your life it probably would be the same or would it be different it, it would be the same i think it's always how we can influence change and there are different approaches and what i mentioned as well the crowds are individuals right every individual by itself and we have to accept this how can we influence how can, how can how can we how can we create something new i think it starts with ourselves and um, that we have to accept and this starts with rethinking rematch reimagine everything Thank you so much, uh, Rudy. It's been a sheer pleasure to speak to you. I um, want to, I will list on our video and on the links, all your websites to the World Systemic Forum, the Hoos Institute and, and many others. Is there anything that my listeners or I could do for you or your movements to help participate or to create something that would help or push for the things that you're working on? Uh, definitely, yeah. we're, we're looking for the right people going with us the journey. And um, in the long term, what we are aiming for is to have a, a house, a house all over the, the globe, but not 
organized by ourselves. It should be independently organized with the same value set, with the same guidelines, with the same rules, right? House yeah. rules, whose rules. And we are looking for people who would like to have their own home for thinkers and changers and doers. Uh, and yeah, feel free to reach out to us, to me, and then to find a way how we can start. Thank you so much. And I'm sure you'll be hearing from quite a few people and uh, I, I'm excited to see the movement grow and, and to take part of it. We'll be seeing each other very soon. Rudy, you have a most wonderful uh, day and, and we'll talk again very soon, my friend. Thank you so much, Mark. You're welcome. Talk Have to you later. Day. You too.